to worship today. This is worship for Sunday, September 13th. And um, I'm Pastor Melinda Stonebreaker at the Greenfield United Methodist Church. And we welcome each of you in the name of Jesus Christ to worship. Um, it certainly is a good thing this week that we got some rain um, in Southwest Iowa here. It's been very damp and wet and I suppose it's a little unfortunate that it happened on the garage sale weekend and during the, the swap meet, um, but I don't think that we're going to hear many complaints because uh, the rain is an answer to prayer. And so we certainly are thankful for that. I want to begin worship this morning uh, by calling attention to our birthdays and anniversaries. And so happy birthday this week to Byron, Lois, Peyton, and Calvin. Pray that your birthdays are blessed and that you know that your church family is thinking about you. And also happy anniversary to Ryan and Morgan and to Eric and Jennifer um, on the 15th. So prayers for your anniversary to be special, uh, a special day and special throughout the year. Why celebrate all year, right? Um, if you have birthdays or anniversaries you would like to include, please let us know at the church office. Uh, the phone number is 743-2715, or you can email office at greenfieldumc.org. Um, and any other announcements that you have to share with the congregation can be sent to the church office as well. A reminder that we have a food pantry every Tuesday from 5 to 7. Um, this is one of the ways that we live out our vision, which is that the Greenfield United Methodist Church is sharing God's love to create a healthy community. Uh, we do that by sharing food. Um, donations are accepted if you want to send them uh, send money of, to help provide food. Also, we really need some more volunteers for this ministry. Right now, the hours are from 5 to 7 on Tuesdays, and as it gets darker, um, earlier, if we uh, we would like to be able to extend those hours to start at four o'clock, but we need some more people, and we especially need young people who are able to carry groceries and to interact with people, um, masked and everything, but be able to go talk with people because most of uh, the current volunteers we have are elderly um, and need to limit interaction with the public and also. Um, are not able to carry groceries out to the cars as uh, we need to do during this time. So please uh, prayerfully consider that as part of your ministry. And even if you can't, or you can't every week, if you think of people, ask them um, and get in touch with the church office uh, if you would like to volunteer. Also, we intended this week to start the story, but can you imagine it? Uh, there's been some delays in our shipping of the books. So we're going to delay that until we get our books in. And so in, instead of starting the story this weekend today, uh, we're going to be delaying it until, I don't know, next week or probably possibly the week following, um, maybe the beginning of October. It really depends uh, when we're able to get the books um, from the distributor. So we have received one shipment, um, but there is more to, many more to come. Uh, we mentioned last week that if your small group uh, would like to meet at the church or if your committee would like to meet at the church, uh, you, the fellowship hall is available for meetings. You need to let the church office know so that can be put on the schedule. Um, and we make sure that we don't have too many people in here at the same time. And you will also get the building use guideline um, when you register with the office to make sure that your um, group can follow the guidelines that have been set out uh, by the Administrative Council. Also, uh, the Administrative Council met this week and they did some, some good work, a lot of listening to one another um, and brainstorming. And it's been um, determined that we can offer an additional option for worship in addition to house churches and streaming online. Um, and that will be to begin um, in-person worship in the sanctuary 
with modifications um, at one service at 10 o'clock in the morning, um, beginning on October 4th. And you'll want to read the letter from the Administrative Council when you get the Tower Talk. We will also be distributing this information um, probably before the Tower Talk is out via email, Facebook, and our website. So um, that's another option for you. And the Ad Council is excited to be able to, to offer that. Our call to worship this morning, um, we've been looking at various places in scripture where God shows up and sometimes in unexpected ways and in unexpected places. This story is from 1 Kings chapter 1, sorry, chapter 19, verses 11 through 13. This is when um, Elijah had had to, to flee um, so to, to save his life, and he was out in the wilderness with God. So God said to Elijah, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now, there was a great wind. The wind was so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind came an earthquake, but the Lord was not in an earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after a fire, the sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are you doing here, Elijah? So in this text about Elijah uh, encountering God, we notice that God was not in the loud things, was not in the, the wind, was not in the earthquake, was not in the fire, but was in the silence. So I uh, invite us to consider the silence and to have a moment of silence where we can hear God saying to us, why are you here? Just as he said, Elijah, why are you here? Let's listen for God in this call to worship in silence. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel God's mighty power and grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Friends, God has called us to worship wherever we are. And the presence of the Lord is here, no matter where your here is right now. Let's pray together this prayer of confession and assurance. Lord, I apologize. Lord, your grace and mercy are ever present in our lives. Your forgiveness is boundless in mercy when we fail to live in Christ like ways. And yet, we are quick to carry a grudge, quick to find fault, quick to assign blame quick to harden our hearts toward others. Set us apart, loving God, to extend and model the grace you've shown us by offering grace to others. We pray in the name of the one who died so that we might fully live. Amen. As Christ has forgiven us, we are to forgive one another. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Amen. This morning's first hymn is um, Many Gifts, One Spirit. Thank 
come forward for the kids lesson right now, but we are going to do that at offering time today. So that will be after the sermon. So please listen now for the reading of scripture from Romans chapter 14 verses 1 through 12. Welcome with open arms fellow believers who don't see things the way you do and don't jump all over them every time they do or say something that you don't agree with even when it seems that they are strong on opinions, but weak in the faith department. Remember, they have their own history to deal with, so treat them gently. For instance, if a person has been around for a while, uh, for instance, a person who's been around for a while might well be convinced that he can eat anything on the table, while another with a different background might assume he should only be a vegetarian and eat accordingly. But since both are guests at Christ's table, wouldn't it be terribly rude if they fell to criticizing what the other ate or didn't eat? God, after all, invited them both to the table. Do you have any business crossing people off the guest list or interfering with God's welcome or correcting if there are corrections to be made or manners to be learned, God can handle that without your help. Or say one person thinks that some days should be set aside as holy and another thinks that each day is pretty much like the other. There are good reasons either way. So each person is free to follow the convictions of conscience. What's important in this is that if you keep a holy day, Keep it for God's sake. If you eat meat, eat it to the glory of God and thank God for prime rib. But if you're a vegetarian, eat vegetables for the glory of God and thank God for broccoli. None of us are permitted to insist on their own way in these matters. It is God we are all answerable to, all the way from life to death and everything in between. We're not accountable to each other. That's why Jesus lived and died and then lived again, so that he could be the master across the entire range of life and death and to free us from the petty tyrannies of each other. So where does that leave you when you criticize a brother? And where does it leave you when you condescend to a sister? I'd say it leaves you looking pretty silly or worse, Eventually, we're all going to end up kneeling side by side in the place of judgment, facing God. 
your critical and condescending ways aren't going to improve your position there one bit. Read it for yourself in scripture. As I live and breathe, God says, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will tell the honest truth that I and only I am God. So tend to your own knitting. You've got your hands full just taking care of your own life before God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The scripture that I just read from Romans um, is the lectionary, one of the lectionary scriptures for today. Um, as I said, we uh, finished up Esther and uh, intended to begin with the story this week, um, but since that's a delay, I'm going to uh, just use lectionary scripture probably this week and next. Um, and so I wanted to uh, use this scripture from Romans um, because I think it's pretty applicable to um, our lives today. And I chose to read from the message uh, because it puts things um, so so plainly and easy to understand um, and, and, and pretty kind of in your face too about this as well. So if, if you would like to read it um, in another translation as well, you're welcome to do that. Um, but uh, I wanted to use the message. So anyway, um, the, the book of Romans is written um, by Paul, and it's one of his later letters. It's uh, not one of the first things that he wrote, and is called Romans because it was written to the Christians in Rome, and Rome was quite a ways away from Jerusalem in Galilee, where Jesus had lived and where Christianity started, um, but there are a few Jews in Rome, and so there is also a group of Jewish Christians. So they were ethnically Jews, and they observed some of the Jewish traditions, which we heard about in the scripture. So they uh, didn't eat certain types of meats, and um, they observed Jewish holidays still, so they had those traditions. Um, and there were also Gentile Christians. So. Uh, Christians that were not ethnically Jews, they were ethnic Greeks or Romans. Um, and so it, we had these two different uh, types of Christians, um, yet they all believed that Jesus was the Son of God, and they believed in the Holy Spirit, they believed Jesus was the Messiah, that he had died and he had resurrected and come back to life, um, and they uh, received salvation through faith in Christ. So they were all Christians, but there, some of them were Jewish Christians and others were Gentiles. Well, in Rome, Jews and the Jewish Christians were somewhat outcast in society. And so that added to the issues between the Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians. So it was partly the custom and it was partly their class issues. Um, and it could be, it's, it's hard to tell, uh, if these were Christians, Jewish Christians and Gentile Christians that were meeting together in the same house churches um, because they, Rome um, and most of early Christianity was all met in houses. They didn't have temples or churches. Um, and so whether it was just a house church that was having conflict or if there was maybe one Jewish Christian house church and then there was a Gentile house uh, house church and there were conflict between these two house churches or groups of them or what it, that's not really clear um but it is clear that there was uh fighting going on and it's also clear that paul had some instruction for them so paul says you people christians here listen Welcome fellow believers who don't see things the way that you do and don't jump all over them when it when they do or say something that you don't agree with, even if it seems that they're strong on opinions, but they're weak on faith. Remember, they have their own history to deal with, so treat them gently. Treat each other gently. He goes on to say, whether you eat meat or don't eat meat, remember, 
You're dining with Jesus. This is the banquet of God. So don't be rude. The church isn't your dinner party. It's God's. And furthermore, they were invited and you're invited. So get along. God's the one that's the judge. And Paul says, really, judging them is it above your pay grade. You have enough to do in life to tend to your own knitting, to discern with God what's going on in your life, in your own heart. So if you don't eat meat, that's fine. Don't eat meat and be thankful for what you do and honor God. And if you eat meat, that's fine too. Eat with thanksgiving and honor God. Okay? So Paul says that believers should welcome each other, even if they differ on opinions, because God has welcomed them all. And Paul, uh, later in chapter 15, he goes on to say, this is how you should welcome one another. Welcome one another just as Christ has welcomed you. Welcome each other as Jesus welcomes you. So I want us to think about what did Jesus welcome look like? Because if we're supposed to welcome people like Jesus, what's that look like? Well, first, think about this. Jesus welcomed all kinds of people, didn't he? If you read the gospel stories, we see that he welcomed fishermen and tax collectors, children and women and men, people with illnesses, people that had moral faults, uh, outcasts, skeptics, religious leaders, government officials, and more. The list goes on. There were not boundaries on who Jesus would welcome. And how did he welcome them? Like, what sorts of things did he do to show welcome? Well, Jesus welcomed them into fellowship. He came and lived with people. So he walked with them. He, he talked. He, he slept and healed and laughed and cried and did more and more. He, just, he lived with people. So the welcome of Jesus says, come, let's do life together. Let's do all of this stuff of life together, you and me. That's the welcome that we have received from Jesus. And that's the way the welcome is supposed to look when we welcome fellow believers. So the welcome of Jesus is unconditional love. It's unwavering commitment that Jesus is committed to us. God is committed to us. And it also comes with some high standards, okay, so of behavior and of how we're going to treat each other. But remember that our the high standards that God has, however, um, come to us being already fully met by Jesus. Remember, Jesus took our sin and our shame, That and shame is that notion that we're never gonna be good enough, that, that we just aren't good enough for God, that, that, or we're not good enough in general, that's shame. Jesus took all of our shame and our sin, those things that we've done wrong, and he defeated that power forever at the cross. We say that each time we have communion, that in the life and death and resurrection of Christ, our sin and the power that it holds over us was dealt with forever. He won forever. And so God's welcome to us then includes complete forgiveness and the grace for us to be able to repent and turn toward God so that we can receive the welcome. So Paul summarized this by saying, Jesus welcomed us because Jesus lived and died and lived again so that we, so that he might be the Lord of the living and the dead. So the very life of Jesus, the death and resurrection of Jesus, all of these things mean welcome, come. I've come to live among you. I, I want you to come and do life with me. Now. Of course, this is Paul writing, and Paul knows that the welcome of Jesus can be very abrupt and very unsettling because the welcome of Jesus in Paul's experience came with a blinding light on the road to Damascus and a shout from heaven um, where Jesus was calling him out as a, as a sinner saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? So Jesus was calling him out and blinded him. Uh, yikes, you know, that, that is quite a welcome, isn't it? Um, so the grace for repentance for Paul that Paul received from God uh, was being blinded and being shouted out. 
And that doesn't sound like much of a welcome. But if we keep in mind that uh, Paul, who was then Saul, was killing Christians um, and his behavior was, was, was awful um, toward the followers of Christ. And so if we think about that, and we think about that really any chance for repentance, any grace, any, any second chance that any of us are given is actually just, it's dripping with grace, right? So God's welcome and God's grace are always there full uh, of love and mercy toward us, right? But sometimes it comes and it is unexpected and it's shocking. And as I was thinking about that, you know, it made me wonder, might God want to use us, use you and use me to offer an unexpected and a shocking welcome to each other, to the fellow believers in our midst, to those outside the church, might God be wanting to use us to welcome them in such a way that they say, oh, whoa, God is amazing. God has such grace for me. So think about that. There's another caveat to the welcome of Jesus that I wanted to mention. So remember that Paul um, is telling us that we are supposed to welcome believers with different opinions. Um, just as we are welcomed by Jesus. And so I want, I want us to think about how did Jesus welcome people? So here's this caveat. The welcome of Jesus was mutual. Okay, so Jesus left heaven and came to earth humbly, and Jesus was welcomed by his own creation. Jesus was welcomed in the arms of Mary and Joseph Jesus was welcomed by the, the animals and the stable and, and, and by the earth. And, and he, he drank water and ate food that God had created. You know, so he was welcomed. The welcome of Jesus includes him being welcomed by humanity. And that extends from Bethlehem all the way to Greenfield and wherever you are. The welcome of Jesus is mutual in that we believers welcome Christ as well. So I'm curious, as you examine this and think about warmly welcoming other people, giving them a surprise and a complete and unconditional welcome, is that a challenge for you? Um, we read in the scripture today that everybody has their own history, so treat each other gently. And I want to keep that in mind, that some of our histories just make it hard for us to welcome people that we, that we differ with. And if that's the case for you, that's okay. Just ask God to help you be a little more welcoming. And um, all of us want to be gentle with each other, and, and that includes with people that it's hard to welcome, um, hard to extend welcome. Some of us, it's probably hard uh, to be welcoming because you haven't been welcomed by others. Uh, so maybe you've been hurt and it's hard for you to forget that pain. Maybe you have a wall that's been built because you didn't feel welcome. Well, I want you to know that God loves you and welcomes you anyway. Um, even if other people didn't, God welcomes you. And I pray that we will be a church that will love and welcome everyone. Well, for some of us, it's hard to be welcoming because welcome is mutual and we can't receive welcome from others, so we can't be welcoming to others, right? If you can't receive God's welcome, then it's going to be hard for you to be truly open and welcoming to people who are different who have uh, different understandings than you. So if Jesus' welcome was mutual, then our welcome is mutual. That we extend our open arms because we've been received by open arms and it's a circle. You really are loved, friends. Even if you don't think you're good enough, I mean, that's okay because Jesus was good enough. So I pray that God will give you grace, give us all grace to receive God's welcome 
and the welcome of your siblings in Christ. Lord, break down any barriers that we have toward being welcomed by you and welcomed by our fellow siblings in Christ. Well, what exactly might a warm welcome look like right now? How can we welcome people like Jesus right now? When Paul said to warmly welcome other believers like Jesus welcomed us, he didn't mean go shake their hand when the pastor says to go shake hands. Uh, he didn't say open the door for people, that's welcome. He didn't say wave when you meet them on the road or put a like on their Facebook post. Although, I mean, any of those actions can be part of welcoming. Rather, the welcome that Paul is after and what we desire with Jesus is to welcome others into a deep, loving, unconditional fellowship so that we seek to understand one another, including each other's reasoning and judgments and practices, even if they're different than our own, because we believe that our siblings in Christ belong to God too and serve God too, and we're all at this banquet together. So during this pandemic, a warm welcome is treating each other with grace and forgiveness. I mean, if you think about it, during a pan this pandemic, we're all learning as we go, and there's so much information that it can become overwhelming. And a lot of that information is presented in a very unwelcoming way. It's like my way or the highway sort of thing, and that is not welcoming. And so when we are encountered with all of that and bombarded with it over and over, um, and feeling isolated and all the other griefs that we are experiencing during this pandemic, we might get short tempered. We might get discouraged more easily. We might get depressed and all of that is true. So a warm welcome during this pandemic is to be kind, be generous to yourself and to others. A warm welcome during an election cycle, which for Iowa is never ending. Um, and like during a, a church denominational conflict and, and, and split, um, a warm welcome then is, is being respectful and hospitable, being friendly, listening, listening deeply to others' opinions, to understand where they're coming from, to hear their histories, to hear their experiences, and then speaking honestly of our own stories. And all the while remaining in Christian fellowship with our fellow believers, even those who hold different opinions, different affiliations, and fill in different ovals on their ballots. That's welcoming. For right now, for us at Greenfield United Methodist Church, being welcoming means extending love and care. And right now, extending another option for worship for all of us. So I have to say thank you to the Administrative Council, um, not, not for any one decision that you, that you have made, but for the so many, many times that I have spoken with you um, and heard from you, a continual message of love and care. Folks, your church Administrative Council really wants what's best for this congregation. They really love and care about you. Um, they, are, they are very excited um, to be able to offer a worship service in the sanctuary soon. Um, it will be in a risk-reduced format, so you're gonna wanna make sure to read about the, the changes. Um, but they're excited about that. And yes, they all hold their own opinions too. Um, and so yes, they also affirm that house churches and online worship are valid and important. And they're committed to continuing to use them um, and to help them continue and improve. And uh, they also know that some of our members would need to stay home for health reasons and they also are not online um, and so we are working to develop ways to reach people like that more and more um, and keep everyone included your church council um, here in greenfield 
really want to warmly welcome everyone. So continue to keep them in your prayers as plans are developed. Um, and keep in mind that Paul was saying to the Romans, how you worship, you know, whether you eat meat or not, and when you worship, whether on certain holidays or not, are not nearly as important as who you worship. And friends, the same is true now. No matter where we worship, whether at home or at a house church or in the sanctuary, all of us are united by the Holy Spirit. So let's be welcoming to our fellow believers, just as Jesus has welcomed us, because this isn't our party. The party belongs to God. Amen. Even um, as we welcome one another who uh, believers who have differences of opinion, we also affirm that there are things that we hold together as being true for all of us. So let's affirm our faith together using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Invite us to sing this call to prayer um, in the name of Jesus, the one who unites us all, our Emmanuel, who is with us. together in the vast diversity of your kingdom. We're reminded that you have given each of us many different gifts. You have brought us from many different life experiences. And when you bring us together, you don't waste any of that. Allow us through the power of your Holy Spirit to be united to you and united with one another offering grace and forgiveness and honest and deep fellowship with one another. Lord, uh, we pray for the church council and the other leaders of this church as uh, we prepare to provide another option for, for worship uh, during this pandemic. Um, guide us, Lord, and hold, um, hold your church safely we know we know that we can trust you for that that you look out for us and you are with us lord we think of people all across the world and um even across just our own country of people dealing with effects of of too much rain and too little rain these forest fires we um 
know that September 11th was in this past week and that, that people have, have struggled with, with that um, remembrance. Lord, hold people in your care, provide for them, bring out the helpers and, and the people that are just like me, just like the members of this congregation, regular people that you inspire and that you use raise them up, Lord. Lord, we give thanks for new life, uh, new births, and um, we pray also for uh, all of the new learning that's going on with school, that you would continue to bless those, those students and teachers. We pray for those who are sick, who are in the hospital, and those who continue to heal. We pray for homes and relationships, and uh, economic situations, Lord. We lift our cares to you. We trust that you will take care of us and that when we honor and worship you in whatever ways we discern our best, uh, that you are glorified and that you receive our praise, you receive our welcome, just as we have been received and welcomed by you. We give you thanks for that. We pray these things in the name of Jesus and through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite us to pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, this is the time of our offering, and so I invite you to. Um, write checks out to the church if you would like, or you can drop by cash in person. The office um, is open on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, from about eight or nine until two o'clock. Um, I'm also here most of the time. So if you want to call ahead and make sure, um, that would be fine as well. And that reminds me that my, my door is open for people. If you would like to meet outside, we can do that. If you want to come in, the office is large here and we can sit at a social distance um, from one another. Um, you can also give online at uh, Greenfield United Methodist Church as well. I'm sorry, greenfieldumc.org. So parents, um, if you wanna work on that now, you have a little bit of time. Well, I wanna talk, uh, to the kids. So I am, um, oh, hang on. I know. Ron would be so sad if I forgot to include him in my children's lesson. And so I went, wanted to pick him up. So he says, hello, everyone. Hello, kids. Um, I am not switching the screen right now because I want to point out this little block right here. And I am curious if any of you know what this is. Um, if you do, you're gonna have to have your parents help you send me a message or, or write me a note or stop by sometime and tell me about Minecraft because this is a Minecraft block and it's called a lodestone. Now a uh, lodestone, uh, is actually a real life thing too. It's a mineral. So if you study geology when you get to be bigger, you'll learn about lodestones. And they are uh, a magnetized rock um, that's like a magnet. So it attracts things to it. So in Minecraft, if you have one of these lodestone blocks uh, in, in your building, it will mess up all of the compasses that come by it because a compass um, uses magnets um, to make the little the the part of the arrow on the compass spin um, and so if you bring it near this this lodestone it will mess mess you up and you won't know which direction you're going because it's going to pull everything toward you now 
I wanted to talk about this lodestone because here in a little bit, and I'm gonna just move forward a couple slides, we have this song. So uh, Charles Wesley who wrote this song and um, he was a, a founder of the Methodist movement with his brother, John Wesley. And that was back uh, like 300 years ago. Um, but he wrote this song and it says, touched by the lodestone of thy love, let all our hearts agree, ever toward each other move and ever more toward thee. So what, what Charles Wesley is saying in his song is that we, when we have been touched by the love of Jesus, God's love is like a lodestone that's like a magnet that's pulling us closer and closer to God. And as we're being moved closer and closer to God, we end up being moved closer and closer to each other as well. So God's love is like a magnet, like a lodestone that pulls us closer and closer together. And if you have a compass that's out trying to find some other treasure in your Minecraft world, this lodestone's going to interfere with that because it's a magnet that's going to pull you that direction and you know what god's love is like that because god's love pulls us closer and closer to jesus which sometimes pulls us away from the other things that we might be uh, chasing or going toward and that's kind of what the offering in our worship service is all about because it reminds us that even though we get pulled and pulled toward other things like maybe wanting something to spend our money on something else, or maybe wanting to spend our time doing something else. God instead is saying, hey, spend time with me. Spend time with these other Christian people because I'm pulling you all closer and closer in my love. And the love of God um, realigns and pulls us together. It's a magnet that we seek after. So may that be true for all of us. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your love. May we feel your, the tug of your love in our lives and be pulled closer and closer to you and closer and closer to each other so that we will reflect and share our, your, lo <clears throat> your love with others and that you can realign our lives to follow you. We pray these things in the name of Jesus and all God's children said, amen. Well, <clears throat> right after uh, Paul wrote the instruction that we read today, that believers should welcome each other just as Christ has welcomed us, um, without judgment, even with people with whom we disagree. After he wrote that in chapter 14 and the beginning of chapter 15, um, later on in chapter 15, he wrote this blessing. And I want you um, and all of us to receive this blessing today. May the God of hope fill you all with joy and peace in believing so that you may abound with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, amen. Our song of sending today, um, like I talked to the kids about, is a Charles Wesley hymn, Jesus United by Thy Grace. Thank you. 